Welcome back to HANA Developer Channel. My name is Rekong. In today's session, we're going to look at difference between a private build and a real deployment in Access Advanced Server. When you start working on Access Advanced Server, the object development is going to happen in Web IDE for HANA. Inside the Web IDE for HANA, you got a developer workspace. In the developer workspace, you got a MTA project created. And then inside the MTA project, you start creating the DB module. And inside the DB module, you create tables, views, and several calculation views, and etc. When you start building those DB modules, they get created as HDI containers in the runtime, as in the database. Similarly, another developer is creating the DB modules with tables and views and etc. They're going to get created as another HDI container in the database. And these two different HDI containers are completely isolated both from the objects perspective as well as data perspective. With that, a developer is going to have uh, their own data in their containers so that they can proceed with their own testing. So this is called a private build process. When the developers are ready with all the changes they wanted to make to those objects, they can start initiating the process of deployment. The deployment makes a cleaner build process by looking at all the dependencies and create a cleaner uh, services and applications and bound together. And the same code base can be taken and can be deployed into another workspace in quality or production. So this is called a lifecycle management process in HANA Access Advanced Server. Now I'm going to explain this process in little detail. I'm going to use this diagram. I've got this diagram from one of my blogs hosted in SAP community, you can search for the HANA deployment for Access Advanced application. You can read through this content. Let's take a closer look at this diagram. In here, you've got a HANA system and an Access Advanced server is associated to your HANA database. There is a mapping between your tenant database to your uh, Access Advanced uh, space. And then developer one starts creating uh, MTA project and DB module, table, views, and etc. When the build process is initiated, they're going to get created as HDI container objects in the database. Similarly, developer two starts MTA project and then DB module, views, and etc. They're going to get created as another HDI container in the database. You can access these objects from DB Explorer. We're going to look at them in a moment, and we can e identify that these two containers are completely isolated. So this is called a private build process. I'm going to show you uh, how it looks like in, uh, in the system. I'm going to access Web ID for HANA. I logged in as my user ID, Srikan. I've got a workspace inside my workspace. I've got a basic MTA project, which contains a DB module. And inside this DB module, I just have a table, an HDB table design time artifact. I'm going to choose build for this DB module. Say build. With this build pro process, a, a runtime object or a HDI container is going to get created in the database. The process has been completed and a service is created. I'm going to access that service or the container from my DB Explorer. I'm going to say yes. It's going to ask me to add an HDI container. So this is the HDI contain container name. Starts with my user ID and some uh, random GUID associated. You can say OK. It's going to get added here. And this container is specific to user Srikan. Let's just refresh. So I can see the container appear here. Let's say access tables. I can see the customer table is show, shown up here. I don't have any data in customer table. I can insert some data into it. So I open an, a SQL console and I just prepared a couple of inserts to the table. I'm going to run this one. Two records inserted. I can check the data using open data two records in it. Okay, good. Now I'm going to log in as a different developer. Go to another browser screen. 
now this time I logged in as XSA developer it's going to be the same project which I can get that from the previous developer export and import you can also use GitLab for uh, sharing the source code so this uh, in this example I just exported the code from the previous developer and then imported that code into my XSA developer workspace it has DB module and there is a customer HDB table design time artifact here so I'm going to say build this DB module And this build process is specific, specific to uh, XSA developer. The build is being completed. Now I'm going to access the HDA container from DB Explorer. I'm going to see uh, a new HDA container which starts with XSA developer username. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say refresh to appear here. It's been there. I'm going to open the tables. And see the customer table is also coming in here. I'm going to say open data. I don't see any data here because the, the data in customer table of previous user is, is specific to that user container only. I can prepare a couple of other inserts into this table. I can grab the SQL from um, my previous user screen and and put it into uh, for the for XSA developer user. For that I'm just going to add SQL and I just drag this one. Now you can see that the schema name is being changed to edw underscore one. The reason for it, this one, I always have one schema name uh, when I'm defining my MTA ML file, but as the different user starts using the MTA ML file it's going to add an extensions underscore one underscore two and etc this is for a complete isolation from other container schema I'm going to paste the SQL and just replace edw1 with edw underscore one I can change these values so that I can have a diff completely different data. So it's okay. Two records added to customer table in EDW1 schema, which is specific to XSA developer user. Cool. Now you can understand that uh, the object developments in XSA developer workspace is uh independent of what uh, developer one Srikanth has been doing they can share the code base using github repository and then collectively uh, build the objects together so this is called private build process now i'm going to just check these services in access command line tools how they are created and how they are bound to uh, an application going to access my command line tool to see the services and the applications bound to those services I can also check those services from access advanced cockpit but I prefer to uh, use command line tools for better administration I open my command line tool I'm going to run the command access services it's going to show me two services one is for developer Srikanth and the other one is for XSA dev user. And these are two different private container services. Okay, now uh, both developers feel that the object development has been completed and they wanted to deploy these objects into a cleaner space and test that with proper data. And after that, uh, that same code base can be deployed into quality or production spaces as part of lifecycle management process or you can call it as transport management process let's take a look at how we're going to do the deployment process in the system so I'm going to access my web IDE 
and this I'm going to choose the project and say build it's going to generate an mtor file as part of the build process of the project I'm going to grab that mtor file and then deploy to the space I would like to the build of the project has been completed which results in an MTA archive file generated in my workspace you can refresh and see that this is my mtar extension file the next step is to deploy this mtar file into a target space i can choose to deploy from my web id for hana you can have the options to deploy to cloud cloud platform or also to access advanced in, in our case it is to access advanced you can choose this one and it's going to ask me the organization and space which is going to be the target for this particular deployment i'm not going to do this from web id instead i will prefer to do it from my access command line tools so for that i need to export this archive file into my personal location of the computer and then start deploying from command line tools so for that i'm going to just say export and export is being completed and i'm going to take this yamtar extension file from the downloads and i'm going to put that in my computer location so i'm going to put this here in the deployments folder i'll say control v just replacing previous file it's good and just go into take this path and go to the command line tools and then run the command xs deploy and provide the file path including the file name file name is going to be I'm not giving any target space by default it is going to get to the space which i connected to in access command line tools that's going to be development if i wanted to put it in a different space i can target that space here with a target command and then it goes uh, to the target specified there so i'm going to run this command now so it's a, a little time taking process it looks for all the dependencies and then starts deployment process and then the cleaner version of the objects will get created in in that particular space and which in turn uh, get created as runtime objects in the space the, the tenant database which is mapped to that space the deployment has been completed now now if you run the services you can now see that um the three services one is, they are two are private containers and there's a cleaner uh, service hdi_db is being created let's take a look at the new container in web id so i'm going to go to this one and add a new hdi container here i'm going to add hdi db and say okay and just uh, going to refresh this one and i've i've got uh, uh, the new cleaner deployed container added to the database so i'm going to open this one and say tables you'll still see the customer table but you don't uh, have the data in it uh because this is this is the new container created as part of the cleaner deployment process and the other two containers were private and you have uh data records inserted as part of your testing so this is going to be um the real deployed version of your object development and you can have proper data in this but in this particular container for testing purpose and once the test results are good in this particular container and you can deploy the same code base into qa or production 
as part of your lifecycle management process. That we can see from the diagram we have in the block. So uh, this is the, these two are the private build containers and this is a container which has um, real deployment objects and once the testing is passed in this the real container and then you can take the yamtar file and uh, uh, deploy that in a, uh, in a another space which is mapped to your QA system and if this is UAT is passed and then you can take the same mtar code and put it into another space which is mapped to your production tenant database. So this is how uh, the lifecycle management of HANA Access Advanced Server in WebID for HANA works. Uh, that's all for this session. If you wanted to know more about the detailed training, please reach out to me at surampalis at gmail.com. Okay, I'll come up with another interesting topic. Bye for now. Thank you.